Hi guys, Oshale here and welcome back to my channel, Oshi Reads. For those of you who are new here, hi, welcome to the Osh fam. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, just take a minute and hit that subscribe button and then also hit the like button. And what else? Yes, hit the bell so that you never miss any one of my videos. I will be posting quite frequently, so I definitely don't want you guys to miss out on any of the content that I have coming up. So yeah, just take a moment to subscribe like and hit the bell. And now that you have, welcome and let's proceed. All right, so NaNoWriMo starts in just a few hours. And if you're like me and this is your second or third or even fourth or even more higher and so on NaNoWriMo, then you are so excited. You cannot wait. You're just waiting for November 1st to come, which should be in just a few hours here, depending on where you are in the world, it might already be November 1st. But yes, so NaNoWriMo is about to begin. NaNoWriMo 2018, another year of just the joy of writing and the anxiety and the angst and the worries of if you're going to be able to get the story out on the page right, or if you're gonna run into any bumps in the road, or if your outline is gonna serve you, or if you're pantsing it like me, <laughs> then you're just wondering what the heck is even going to come out on the page. But if this is your first NaNoWriMo, then you're probably leaning more towards the anxiety side. And even if this isn't your first NaNoWriMo, I mean, I have anxiety every year. The anxiety is not quite as bad as it was the first time I did it, just because with experience and with the more NaNos I've done, including the Camp NaNoWriMo's, I know my writing journey a lot better, my writing technique, my writing process, that's what the word I'm looking for. I know my writing process a lot better now, so my anxiety is not quite as bad because the fear of the unknown is no longer included in that. But this video is really for those who have never attempted NaNoWriMo before and this is the first year you've decided that you're going to join in and I just wanted to share some advice with you all. These are just 10 tips, tricks, words of wisdom that I wish someone had told me back when I did it for the very first time. Tip number one is to write every day. No exceptions, no excuses. Write every single day. Trust me on this one. So that means once day one rolls in, get to writing. Don't skip any days. Write every day. Trust me on this, seriously. Tip number two is to schedule your writing into your day and stick with it. Do not stray from that time. Look at your schedule if you work in the mornings and it's easier for you to write after you get home from work, maybe after you've had dinner, if you have kids, once you've sorted things out with family or you know if you have a dog like I do once you've watched once you've walked your dog and fed your dog, whatever after work responsibilities that you have, try to figure out if it's better for you to write after work or I know some writers that wake up one or two hours before work or before it's time for them to get ready for work and they write during that time. For me, it really depends on whether you're a morning person or a night person and everyone pretty much knows which one they are. So whichever side you lean towards the most, if you're a morning person, then it'll probably be easier for you to wake up early in the morning and before you start your day, make sure you get your words in. And if you're more of a night owl, then it's definitely going to be easier for you to stay up and write at night. But the most important thing is to actually schedule your writing time into your day as, as you would schedule a doctor's appointment or any other important appointment. That time is not going to shift or move. You're going to stick to it and that's definitely going to help you be successful during this month. Tip number three is to find a cozy and safe space for you to write. And that will almost guarantee that you actually will write. I know a lot of us you know, struggle with anxiety when it comes to writing. A lot of us struggle with procrastination. And so if you have a place that you've set up and it's very cozy and it feels very safe and it's very comfortable and it's a place that you actually want to spend time in that almost guarantees that you will more than likely get writing that day. Um, if you are like some people who can't write in their own homes because you're going to get distracted, whether it be by your TV or your kids or your dog or just, you know, you look around your house and you're like, 
you see all the things that you need to get done, like cleaning or laundry or anything like that, then you need to get out of the house to write. So that means you need to find a safe and cozy place outside of your home. So that could be in a neighborhood coffee shop, maybe at a cozy little bookshop or independent bookshop, somewhere where you can go that you're going to feel safe and it's okay for you to spend hours there. Um, you know that it will be peaceful and that you'll be able to lose yourself in your writing. You won't be easily distracted. So definitely find somewhere if it's either in your home or outside of your home where you know you can definitely easily get lost in your story. Tip number four is to make sure, make sure that you hit that daily word count goal. I believe when you break 50,000 words up into 30 days, it evens out to be about 1,666 words a day. Now it might seem like, oh, you know, I got 500 words written yesterday and I'll just make it up tomorrow or I'll just, I'll just write another 500 words and then make it up this weekend or I'll just write 300 words a day and then I'm off on Saturday so I'll catch up. No, don't do that. That is a trap. That is a sinkhole that you are never going to climb yourself out of. It sounds very easy and it sounds very logical no matter how busy you are with your life to think, oh, you know, I work during the week so I'm going to write less during the week and I'm off on the weekend so I'll catch up on the weekends or I'm so busy this week with this event or you know whatever life might present at you at the time so I'm gonna pick this one day where I'm completely off or in two weeks I have three days off or I have a one week vacation in the middle of the month and I'm going to catch up on all my words don't do it don't do it it is a trap because once you fall behind it's going to get harder and harder each day to catch up you're losing out on that momentum and the the distance to 50,000 words is going to get bigger and bigger each day and once you go on that nano site and you see how many words you've written per day and how many words words you need to write to catch up you're going to start to get discouraged it's going to start to psych you out it might cause mental blocks so just try your best to hit that daily word count goal 1666 words each and every day each and every day in your scheduled time to write that you've set out in your cozy and safe place because you're writing every day you see how it all connects just trust me. Now tip number five might seem like a no-brainer, but <laughs> you'll be surprised how much this trips people up. But pick a story idea that you're actually passionate about. No, seriously. Not the story idea that you just got on a whim or you got the day before NaNoWriMo, although sometimes it works out for people. But pick the story idea that has really just captured you. The one you can't stop thinking about. The one whose characters harass you throughout the day. The one that you go to sleep dreaming about, wake up thinking about, that you've written notes about, that you are just spending so much time contemplating. Maybe you've spent years thinking about this story, but you feel ill-equipped to write it down. You feel uneducated. You feel like you haven't done enough research or you don't have enough life experience. Or you're just not that experienced of a writer and you feel underqualified to attempt the story that has been in your mind for years. This is the time. This is the time. This is your story. It was given to you for a reason and nobody can tell the story like you can. The story belongs to you. The characters came to you. The plot came to you. There's a reason why you haven't been able to let this idea go. This is the one. This is the one that you are passionate about. This is the one that you are dedicated to. This is the one that is going to get you through 30 days of intense writing. Days when you wake up and you don't want to write. Days that just feel so overwhelming with life and then you have to kind of step back and put that aside and get to writing. Days where you're honestly going to feel as if you're not going to be able to overcome whatever plot holes or story obstacles that you're facing. You know, maybe you start writing and you find out that this whole character has changed or this character's not even needed in the story or anymore or the scenery has changed or you realize you need to do more research on this particular time or place or thing this is the story that is going to get you through all of that because this is the one this is the one that you cannot let go of trust me you do not want to be lukewarm or apathetic or half in and half out about what you're going to be writing this month it is not going to work and you are not going to make it to day 30. Tip number six, do not delete anything, anything. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's gibberish. I don't care if it's, it's you wrote, add the scene in later or something dramatic happens here. 
do not delete anything doesn't matter if you are three chapters in or three scenes in or 10 pages in you've decided that you're going to completely start over and what you've written is crap and you're not going to use it anymore and you're just going to toss it out don't delete it keep every single thing because it's going to help you to get to that 50,000 word count goal that you need to reach by the end of the month so keep everything don't delete anything seriously seriously don't do it don't do it. I know. I know you're tempted. Don't do it. Tip number seven goes along with tip number six. Don't edit. Don't go back. Don't reread. I know you're 25 pages in. It's very exciting. Maybe you've gotten to 15,000 words or you're at 10,000 or you're approaching 25,000. These amazing landmark word counts. That is perfect. And you're thinking, hmm, maybe I want to go back and, and reread and see what I have or, or maybe I should start my editing. No, it's a trap. Don't do it. You're going to get stuck at the beginning rereading, you know, maybe that whole chapter that we talked about last point that you decided you were going to throw out and start over and now you're rereading it and you're so attempted to delete it or you're so attempted to edit. Don't do it. You're going to get stuck and you're not going to be able to move forward. And this journey is all about moving forward, not moving back. So don't edit and don't reread. Just, just, just don't. Trust me. Just don't. Tip number eight is don't be afraid to be obsessed with your story and to fall in love with your story. Don't be afraid to feel as if you're doing something meaningful this month and something important. Maybe you're an unpublished writer and there's a stigma run around unpublished writers where we feel as if what we're doing isn't valid and it, it's not being validated on a, on a large platform by the world because we don't have this work that's out there in order to prove that what we're doing is worthwhile. I completely understand that. Or maybe this is the first novel or, or, or long story that you've ever written and you, you know, you're unsure, maybe you're in high school or middle school or whatever your age or occupation or career choice, whatever your responsibilities, whoever is in your life, don't make the world or the people in your life make you feel that what you're doing isn't important. You know, allow yourself to truly fall in love this month with your writing and with the writer that you're becoming and with this story. Don't be afraid. I feel as if in today's world, it's so cool to be very nonchalant and standoffish and act as if we don't care and everything's just fine and I'm just chill and to put up this facade where we're just so unemotional. But I actually feel that that is a disservice to us. It is actually beautiful to be passionate about something. It is beautiful to be transparent. It is beautiful to truly be obsessed and in love with something and to take this Seriously, this is your craft. This is your passion for a lot of us. We feel as if this is our purpose So do not be afraid to just be in love with what you are doing this month I am here to validate you and I'm here to tell you that it is completely okay tip number nine self-care is important <laughs> Do not forget to take care of yourself. Please don't slack on your nutrition. Don't stop going to the gym. Don't isolate yourself from friends and family. Find time for yourself. Find time to breathe. Take breaks. You know, have snacks with you while you're writing so you don't forget. Sometimes we get so consumed and so wrapped up in the story that we even forget to eat. Please don't be dehydrated. It's very easy to be dehydrated during this process. Keep some type of, of beverage, you know, preferably water with you at all times. You can get a water bottle and just kind of have it on hand while you're writing to remind yourself to drink water. You can have snacks on hand to remind yourself to eat healthy snacks. And just remember to take care of yourself and to take breaks when you need to, when you're starting to get overwhelmed or frustrated when you've hit a wall in your story and you're not sure where you're going. Just, just go take a walk, go to the gym, call a friend, you know, go watch a few YouTube videos, go watch some episodes on Netflix of your favorite show. Don't forget to take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and physically. It's very important. And last but not least, final tip number 10, believe in yourself. That's it. Believe in yourself. And it ties up everything into a nice little bow. Believe in yourself and what you're doing. Believe that this is valid and real work. You know, as a creative, it can be very, very hard to feel authentic, to feel 
you know, like what you're doing is worth something, especially if you're not producing something for consumption. We live in a very consumerist society where people feel that if you're not producing something that can be consumed by people outside of maybe you, your family, or your circle, if it's not something that can be either commercialized, commodified, or made into some financial avenue of, of success, then it's not worth it. It's it's not even worth mentioning. This feel as if what we're doing is not important and is not worthy of giving our attention and our focus to. But that's craft, that's the life of being an artist and the life of being a creative. And you just have to believe in what you're doing. You have to follow that gut feeling that's telling you that this is what you are meant to do. And even if this is just something you're doing for fun, as a hobby, to stretch and to challenge yourself as a stress reliever, maybe as self-therapy, whatever your reasoning is, it is completely valid and authentic to you. And you should not allow yourself to mentally cheat yourself out of the rewards that you can get out of attempting something like this. Those are my tips to win NaNoWriMo, not just this year, but any year really. And and I hope that if you do decide to do NaNoWriMo, that you please just find me on the NaNoWriMo site and let's be buddies and encourage our and encourage each other this NaNoWriMo. Definitely let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on NaNoWriMo. Will you be participating? Will you not? Have you ever participated? Is this your first year? Let me know all the things down in the comments and I hope that this video has been somewhat helpful to you all in some way and I will catch you guys in my next NaNoWriMo video. Bye! <laughs> Bye guys! Peace! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. <sighs> another year, another NaNoWriMo. <laughs> I'm so excited to do NaNoWriMo this year. I feel like this year I don't know, this year, something about this 